So, as this website from DPA says, we are going to take you to Microphone University and talk about stereo microphone techniques. Since it's probably not uncommon that you'll run into a situation where you say we'll want to capture like an entire event happening just with two microphones and just capture it in stereo or um, record a stereo instrument. I guess would probably be your other situation like with a piano or I've done this all the time with acoustic guitar. You know, so many different acoustic instruments you could possibly be doing this. So, there's actually a number of different techniques you can use to capture sound using two microphones in stereo. And it's really common to use you know, what we call pencil mics or small diaphragm condenser mics just because by their very nature you can get the capsules really close together and they just tend to work really well because of their, you know, they have the cardioid polar patterns and um, it typically just tends to capture a natural response from wherever you set the mics up. So there's all kinds of different techniques. In fact, they list about, um, well, there's like a dozen almost of different stereo mic techniques. There's a few though that we're gonna focus on and probably by far the most common, which interestingly they put at the very bottom on the site, is XY stereo. So it's taking the two mics and it's actually putting them in almost an X pattern. So what I would do, if I have my two mics, and the goal is to keep the two capsules as close together as you possibly can. Now, do you have any idea why that would be? Like, what could be a problem if your capsules aren't close together? And my hint would be it has um, to would be. Would it be like oh. late between the two more? You're on the right track, yeah. yeah. Like it it, it all has to do with timing. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, if you remember me talking about uh, phasing or phase cancellation, yeah. this is totally where it comes into play. So let's see, this is one. No, this is one. This is two. I think. I'll have to double check before we start recording. So the timing, that's exactly the reason. And even if it might seem like, okay, two mics this far apart, no big deal the smallest little bit of difference could have an effect you know, on how clear your, your um, stereo recording is. So it could be the difference between a good and not so good recording. And that's why it's so important to know these different techniques because the littlest difference could really improve the quality of, of what you record. So the way XY works essentially is we know the capsules are right on the ends of the mics and again because they're front facing microphones, the easiest way to set up an XY pattern is I'll set up one here facing toward the, I guess I would be getting the left hand side of my image. And then when you start out an XY, you always want to go at a 90 degree angle. So I sort of carefully put this just above smack together either. And we're literally, like, if you looked at it straight from the top down, oops, let's see, it makes, a, we want to make an X with the two capsules together. And then 90 degrees, obviously, just being a perfect, we're perfectly uh, crossing each other here. So that's pretty close. So if our source, assuming our source was over here, that's what an XY I don't know what to look like. And so I would say in a pinch, like you can almost never go wrong with an XY pattern. That's how I would do, about how I would do an XY. So now we're not quite at 90 degrees. In fact, we're, we've tightened the angle, but that's okay. Um, it just means that our stereo image won't be quite as wide, right? Because we're not facing them as far apart. Which is, which is not a big deal. Again, as long as the capsules 
are close together. So that is x, y. With our large diaphragm condenser mics, I'm going to do an AB stereo pair. So we've talked about x, y. Now we're going to compare this to AB. So AB, as it describes here, is two spaced microphones creating a stereo image. So the only thing that's creating the stereo image is the spacing between the mics now. So this is kind of like opposite thinking. So instead of putting the mics as close together as possible, we're spacing them out, but we're not angling the mics at all. So that's the difference. Uh, the microphone spacing introduces small differences in time or phase information contained in the audio signal. So this is an, a perfect example of phase differences, but this is on purpose because we are going to be panning the tracks. And so we actually, for AB stereo, we want there to be timing differences between the two channels. So see the difference? Where with XY, one of the reasons this is a safe bet is because of the capsules always being close together. We don't have phase differences. With the stereo pair, now we're using their distance apart to actually create the stereo image. So it's a totally different way of thinking about it. Check my settings. And there we go. So we have a nice uh, XY and a nice AB stereo pair. So we have a few variables going on just to, just to put it all together. So just the fact that these are back from the piano farther might play into just a slight difference. So really, all these differences into account, we should be able to pinpoint some pretty clear differences when we listen to the two pairs together. So let's see if that happens. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, we'll get you set up for your incredible performance mic. And I want to figure out headphones, uh, headphone set, so we can actually communicate with you. And uh, like the person who's up in the studio, and let's see what's, what else we can do. Oh, but really set levels up in the studio. But the one's the low because it's the farthest away, it's in there. The water is the one that's... I'd say everything from what I could see out there looks maybe a little bit hot. Um, so you probably just want to be going into the yellow, or I think it's yellow. Like halfway up on these? Yeah, you like... Hey, keep going. Okay. Okay. No, it's playing quieter. That's because he doesn't have the high ends coming through. Play yeah. higher notes, too. Huh? Play, Play at full range. That's good. Well, any, anything you're adjusting though is going to be on the on the ATB mixer for gain. But that looks about perfect, I'd say. Is it the, <laughs> is it, is it the, the um, pattern or is it the distance? I'm not quite sure because we have too many variables. So with, the, with the XY, I couldn't even hear anything from the loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear anything on the left speaker with the XY pattern. Really? Or it must have been a lot less full, full sounding. You want to try that one again? Yeah. The left side actually didn't have a very high signal on the board. They look pretty even. Let's see. When you're looking at the I start this. All right. Well, with that wonderful little bit, we successfully mic two different. Recorded two different mic patterns. Out recorded there. mic twice. Recorded mic. We mic'd mic. Yeah, mic. With mic. mic. So. We're going to try two more stereo pairs, and Matt has a very nice uh, XY setup again here, but you'll notice we are very far from the piano. So we're going to get more of a, a room mic sound, and so when we listen back to it, we're going to obviously probably hear some pretty obvious differences. Now if you come with me without uh, seriously injuring yourself on the cables, we're going to try another fun one. So this is a new one. You'll notice that we are using the same uh, AB space pair technique. Hey, JC. Hey. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, and uh, the only difference is 
This is what we would call a baffled spaced pair. And our foam, being our baffle, is sort of representative like our ears and uh, our head being the space between our ears. So a baffled pair is supposed to more represent what uh, it would actually sound like if we were sitting in front of it. And in fact, to be a true, what they would call binaural uh, miking, you would probably want um, omnidirectional mics, like, like before, like I said before. So then you'd be hearing kind of all around you on one side, like your ears would, but you wouldn't hear directly through your own head, <laughs> which is kind of what the baffle is representing. So what you'll be able to hear side by side is, what does it sound like when there's nothing between the mics? But now that we've put up some acoustic foam between the mics, how is that going to differ? Um, and does it make it sound more realistic? And this one might be especially interesting to listen to with headphones. And, and so we can listen to see, does it sound more sort of realistic if our headphones are on? All right, so that's our two techniques. And Mike is going to play another gorgeous rendition of, does this song have a title? Scales and arpeggios from the Aristocats. <laughs>